Throughout ages there has not been a single culture in the history of humankind that has not spent a significant amount of time thinking about death. And now we know that it has no restrictions, no specific pattern nor does it give a reason as to why one has to lose their loved ones at a certain point of life. But whatever triggers the demise of a human being is beyond a human's control, so it should be no surprise that we attribute the mysterious process of death to supernatural forces. In Western culture, we have the angels of death and the grim reaper, otherworldly beings that usher souls from the mortal coil into the afterlife. However in Japan they have the Shinigami, but as it is with so much in Japanese tales, there are many unique twists to these supernatural beings. In Japanese mythology, the world is filled with kami of various sorts, so according to it everything in the world has a spirit that governs it, and thus the kami of death are known as the Shinigami. Contrarily to the Western Grim Reaper who is often depicted as a tall skeleton in a robe reaping souls whenever one's time of death has come, the Shinigami are gods or supernatural spirits whose job is more like to invite mortals toward their death based in some aspects of the Japanese culture. The true identity of the kami playing the role of the Shinigami is not always clear. For instance, Izanami is sometimes referred to as the first Shinigami because she is believed to have first introduced death to the world. Same goes for Yama the god of the underworld who is also thought of as a Shinigami. But it's not entirely clear whether these two are truly entities personifying death or not, besides they are both thought to be different from death gods in western concepts. Some forms of Buddhism do not involve believing in any deities, so it is sometimes thought that the concept of a god of death does not exist to begin with. There is the opinion that there is no death god that merely leads people into the world of the dead, but later on the western notion of an entity ruling over death entered Japan, and the Shinigami started to become mentioned as an existence with a human nature. Since a death spirit is invisible to everyone except the few who have some sort of connection to death or who are close to dying themselves, Describing a Shinigami is a surprisingly difficult thing to do and it seems that even when they are seen, they never have the same look because they come with different guys in shape, which means that you won't necessarily recognize one if you ever see it. Although Japanese myth have long been filled with different types of kami as the spirits of nature, the Shinigami only entered the Japanese lore around the 18th or 19th century. Generally the word Shinigami does not appear to have been used in Japanese classical literature, and there are not many writings about them. But the first known instances of the term appear in the Edo period, when it was used in a type of Japanese puppet theater called the Ningyo Yururi which has a connection to evil spirits or spirits possessing the living, and had themes of double suicides. Although Shinigami are kami like any other in Shinto religious lore, they are actually a relatively modern invention and it was not until traditional Shinto beliefs came into contact with the West that the idea of a death god or spirit such as the Shinigami really entered the collective imagination. Once the East met the Western culture with its notion of Grim Reaper, a whole new death god appeared and was known as the Shinigami since then. So it may very well be that the Western folk tales of a Grim Reaper served as the original inspiration for these Japanese entities. While the Shinigami seem to be similar to the Grim Reaper, they are not entirely alike, and a few important differences exist between them both. In Western belief, the Grim Reaper is regarded as a terrifying being and is the personification of death itself. In Japanese folklore however, way before the idea of a kami personifying death came to Japan, Traditional beliefs did not necessarily see death as a bad thing but as a normal part of the natural cycle of one's existence. Therefore, the Shinigami are regarded as agents who facilitate the smooth running of this cycle. Unlike the Grim Reaper who may be described as a harvester of souls, the Shinigami merely ensure that people die at the appointed time and then escort their souls into the afterlife. They could even be said to be less frightening than the Grim Reaper because they politely invite people into their death instead of creeping up on them and dragging them to the afterlife or using a more aggressive mean to reap them off their souls. Additionally, while the Grim Reaper is depicted as a singular entity traditionally bearing a scythe, 
It is believed that there are many Shinigami of unknown appearances which usually work in pairs and appear when it is a person's preordained time to die at which point they invite them over the threshold between life and death. Not a lot of stories were told regarding these Shinigami, but we know this much about them from an old traditional tale of a man who was fed up with his life and decided to commit suicide. Before he could do so, he is visited by a Shinigami who told him that his time has not yet come, and explained to the man that lives are measured on candles that burn down until the flame vanished signifying their death, but since his own has not burned out yet he should live on. This shows one more time that the Shinigami have no control over who lives and dies. In order to prevent the man from committing suicide, the spirit told him a secret that can help him make some easy money just by pretending to be a doctor who could cure any form of disease. So the Shinigami revealed to the man some magical words that could send a death spirit away, thus lengthening a person's life. The man is also informed that this would only work if the Shinigami is sitting at the foot of the person's bed, but if the entity is sitting on the opposite side this would mean that the sick person's candle has burnt out and they must die accordingly. Using this newfound knowledge, the man became extremely rich by banishing the Shinigami lurking around dying people, but as a mere human he was consumed by greed and eventually lost himself to it. The man was called to a house to cure a dying person, but when he entered he saw the Shinigami sitting by the head of the patient's bed indicating that death was inevitable. The family pleaded and offered an obscene amount of money to save their loved one, but knowing that trying to use his spell under this particular condition was against the rule he was instructed to follow, the fake doctor decided to outsmart the Shinigami by switching the orientation of the bed, thus saving the patient's life. When he tried to banish the Shinigami however, the man burned out the rest of his own candle and lost his life. Many Japanese people who belong to the Shinto religion still very much believe in Shinigami as much as they do with other kami, but the modern Japan is a very secular nation so most people do not literally believe in the existence of the god of death. However we have to keep in mind that Japanese love to honor their traditions, so the Shinigami are still part of the Japanese culture as much as the Grim Reaper is in the western world. The Shinigami have kept up with times as they now featured in several very popular television series from Japan. From modern Japanese anime to manga with notable titles like Death Note, Soul Eater and Bleach. But in each of these anime, the Shinigami are often given roles that are quite different from their traditional ones. In Death Note for instance, the Shinigami are grotesque creatures who write names of humans who are meant to die in a notebook. But one of these death notes falls into the hands of a human who tries to change the world but ultimately failed for toying with what many would consider to be the power of a god. In Bleach, the Shinigami are actually a society of Japanese samurai whose job is to keep law and order in the afterlife. So apart from their association with death, these modern Shinigami do not have much in common with their more traditional counterparts. Stories about the Shinigami have been popular throughout history, and because death and the afterlife are recurrent themes present in popular beliefs, it seems likely that stories regarding death-like entities will remain that way for pretty much longer than what we imagine. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, stay curious.